Hi folks, welcome to A Voice in the Desert once again. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, some serious stuff that's occurring in our churches today. Um, and it's impeding the word of God of getting through and helping people. So we're going to go ahead and speak about today the major serious warning signs of a church that is not a church. So before I start, I want to say a quick prayer. Father God, please forgive me of my sins, my Lord. Help me to be clean and pure to deliver this message to your people, my Lord. May it fall on fertile grounds. May they listen to it. May they react to it. May it regurgitate in them the pure truth to move to action, Father. And I do it in a loving and kinding way, not in a condemning in a condemning way, Father, because your word never condemns, Father. Your word is saving and your word is love, Father. Please enable the Holy Spirit within me to deliver this message, Father, as it is according to your word, to be faithful to your word, to your Bible, word for word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to start with four topics, okay, that actually go ahead and destroy a church. Okay, um, first one is going to be gossip. Okay, we know gossip runs rampant and we know that gossip creates a lot of problems. Gossip is one of the most destructive things we do as a society. It slanders people's names. It assassinates their characters. Um, it is whispering behind other people's back. However, it should never be heard in any church at all. Remember that. Gossip should never be heard in any church at all. When you hear gossip, you know that you're probably being gossiped about too also. Gossip can split churches, ruin relationships, bring down even the strongest of churches. Gossip destroys families and ministries, but especially the souls that abide in that church and trust it in that pastor that he would do or what he would be doing if he were their good pastor but failed for whatever reason remember that pastor will be held more accountable than a mere person that's in gossip okay now we're gonna come to another topic is calling tearing down okay I remember this church that I once belonged to uh, and that church members were always complaining about every little nonsense details such as the color of the altar, uh, the color of the rug, the color of the paint. Um, they always have to look for something to complain. They didn't provide a solution, but they were great at complaining. They also complained about the message of the pastor. And nothing made them happy. If a good deed was done, and those people were recognized because of their good labors, the rest of the brethren would not rejoice with them. Instead of being happy that they did a great job, okay? No, that's envy. They didn't rejoice with them, okay? Also, the government of the church was laden with nepotism, and they never consulted the members of future plans that they had with the church and this too was an imbalance and created strife in the church. When a church starts to pick favorites or measure its members by the amounts of tithing they give, this is a toxic church. And from this too you should run. Imagine how grieved Jesus must be when Christians tear down one another over trivial matters. Jesus suffered, was beaten, tortured, put to death and some can't even agree on the color of an altar when you see a church dividing and arguing over non-essentials that church is too toxic on its path to becoming one and it is one that should not be attended finally in Matthew 12 25 through 30 says the following and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. 
how shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Bezubob, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come on to you. Or else can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that does not gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wow. That's what God says about tearing down and bringing down. God's word is straight to the point. God does not beat around the bush. Okay? And here goes another part. A church with no ministries. When a church has zero ministries, this church is about to die. If you read Matthew 25, chapter 25, verses 34 through 40, the word of God says the following. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was and hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in naked. And in na my nakedness you clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I him saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. So this is very easy what God just said. And in the simplest forms, simplest way I can describe this is, if you have served any of these needs to the less of the people and the poor, you have done it unto Jesus. If you have given food to a hungry person, you did it unto Jesus. If you visited somebody in prison and gave them a good word and tried to lift up their spirits, you did it unto God. If you gave clothes to the needy and the poor and they clothed with that clothing, you did it unto Jesus. Those are the ministries. When you can read what Jesus, this church, should be doing. Many churches are only interested in saying within the four walls of the church. Boy, does that irk me. Why do we want to stay within the four walls of the church when we inside are supposed to be the ones that are healed and are supposed to be leaving those four walls looking for people outside the church to bring them in to heal them? We should not stay inside the four walls period getting into holy huddles you know talking to each other god knows what you're talking you're probably not even ministering to each other and never met and nevertheless ministering to the poor visiting the sick those in prison and the widows or orphans or those in nursing homes if you want to simply be a pew bench warmer then you might like it but a church that has no ministries is a church that is toxic, is a church that is selfish, it is a church that is getting ready to die. If you are currently in one of these types of churches, or you notice that the church is turning into one, don't give up on it that quickly. Instead, fast and pray for the leadership of that church, and ask God if He wants you to leave that church. If he gives you the answer, and only after God tells you, then you may leave in peace from that church. If the church 
does not believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as speaking in tongues, I tell you, and I tell you again, run for your life. For the Holy Spirit was sent to us upon the departure of our Savior to heaven to teach us, to reveal us the secrets of heaven and our Savior and to comfort us. This is what the Word of God says about the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. Okay? It's pretty lengthy, but it's necessary that we hear this Word. Okay? Because salvation comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. Acts 2, starting at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush of mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each and one of them on their heads. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men. Now you know why you should run from that church, because it will cost you your soul. Another ministry that a church cannot be without is the ministry of deliverance. This is what the word of the Lord says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. Them that are bruised. That is the ministry of deliverance. This is what God does. Deliver people from being possessed from demons, from evil spirits being tormenting them. Okay? Deliver them from their sicknesses and healing. That's why we have a government in the church that's why there's a pastor that's why there's an apostle that's why there's elders that's why there's deacons okay so they can carry out this missionary deliverance and healing of that ministry which is very important to the body of the church remember the church is a hospital the people that first come into it are sick and if there is no deliverance, if there is no ministry that can take care of their sickness, what use is there for the church? Okay? So ministry, the deliverance ministry, must be present in all churches. Now we're going to go to a very, uh, very touchy subject. Okay? And we're going to talk about unbiblical teachings okay people are shifted or moved by all types of winds all types of chatter okay uh, people talk about all types of religion Buddha uh, Hare Krishna uh, Allah Satanism they talk a lot of yoga which is Buddhism uh, they talk a lot about a whole bunch of other religions which are really no gods at all. Okay? Because there's only one living God. His name is Yahweh, Jehovah, Abba Father, our living God. That is the only one that's true, exists, and protects us. And when he talks to us about unbiblical teaching, there seems to be a famine of the word in many churches today. Notice that I said the word famine of the word in many of the churches today. The focus is on pragmatism. In other words, if it works, it must be biblical. But that is not how churches are supposed to operate. They must be consistent with biblical teachings or simply you're in a different type of social club. 
nothing different. If preachers are not preaching straight out of the Word of God, when they know better, then they are like the many talk shows that you see on TV. Example, like Oprah Winfrey, which, by the way, is of none of my liking. There are opinions that you can't even hang your hat on because they are so out of this world and straight from the pits of hell. The Word of God cuts like a knife, but it cuts in order to heal. Instead, some churches like to use sugar and spice and the prosperity routine approach, not wanting to make anyone uncomfortable, even though that's what the Word of God is supposed to do. It's supposed to provoke you to a change, to an action, to a decision making, to a crossway, to a midpoint that you are to make a change. And this is what Hebrews 4.12 says. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? That's what it says about biblical teaching. So if you want to be patted on the back, also, the Word of God says uh, in the International Standard Version, and this we're talking about unbiblical teachings okay and there's a lot of this and this one is going to hit straight to home some people might be offended by this okay but i tell you i give a hoot who gets offended and the reason i'm telling you this is because if i am reading from the word of god from the conviction of god and being guided by the holy spirit to speak to his word i speak no lie and if I speak no lie, I speak of God. So we're going to read 1 Timothy chapter 1, 8 through 11. And the word of God says, Of course that we know the law is good if a person uses it legitimately. That is, if he understands that the law is not intended for righteous people but for lawbreakers and rebels, for ungodly people and sinners, for those who are unholy and irreverent, for those who kill their fathers, their mothers, or other people, for those involved in sexual immorality, for homosexuals, for kidnappers, for liars, for false witnesses, or for whatever else goes against the healthy teaching that agrees with the glorious gospel of the blessed God which he entrusted to me. Huh. What do you say about that? I want you to take this down, jot it down. 1 Timothy verse chapter 1, 8 through 11. Write that down because you're going to need it at some point in time to rebuke Satan when he comes against you against accusations when you do not agree with the things of the world. Our God also speaks about false teachers. This one is going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. A warning against false teachers. When I was on my way to Macedonia, I urged you to stay in Ephesus. This is Paul, okay, speaking to the church of uh, Timothy. Okay, when I was on my way to Macedonia, I urged you to stay in Ephesus so that you might instruct certain people to stop teaching false doctrine and occupying themselves with myths and endless genealogies. These promote controversies rather than God's ongoing purpose, which involves faith. Now, the goal of this instruction is love that flows from a pure heart, from a clear conscience, and from a sincere faith. Some people have left these qualities behind and have turned to fruitless discussions. 
They want to be teachers of the law, yet they don't understand either what they are talking about or the things about which they speak so confidently. So people, be careful when you listen to others and they say they're speaking the word of God. Measure it against the Bible. Carry your Bible at all times. Be careful with people that speak so confidently without checking their words with the Bible. If there is one word that is not in accord with the Bible, you must dismiss everything that was said. And that is a false teaching. Okay? I'm going to bring this to an end. Okay? Because uh, this was uh, pretty difficult to speak about. Um, a lost church is one where its members constantly gossip about others where they argue over non-essential things, where there are no ministries involved, where there is no biblical preaching. And people, I want you to listen to this one because this is how we're going to end this message. It's like Amos the prophet said, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And you can find this in Amos 8.11. Sadly, that day has come and is upon us. But thankfully, not all churches are lost. Father God, I want to give you the thanks, Lord for giving me the Holy Spirit to be able to deliver this message. Let this be a message of warning, of wake-up call, of instructions, of guidance to your people, that they may spread this message to their family members, to their friends, of those that have not heard about your word or have not heard of this message this way. For this message came from you, Holy Spirit, and I give you thanks for guiding me and in delivering it, my dear Lord. Forgive me of my sins, for I am not perfect, Lord. But yet I still try to do what's right, which is to deliver your word according to your Bible, Father God. Thank you for shedding your blood on the cross for us. Thank you for wiping us clean of our sins. Thank you for not accusing us and reminding us of our sins every single day. For your word says you forgive our sins as far as the east is from the west. And for that, my dear Lord, I thank you for this message. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my name is Caesar, and I'm a voice in the desert. If there is anyone here that is listening right now and wants to leave their old self behind, and this message has shown you that some needed changes has to take place, and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you're running away from God for whatever reason, and you want to reconcile yourself back to Him, I want you to go ahead at this very moment, bow your heads to all those that are listening and pray the salvation prayer and repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins and now I am willing to turn from my sin you said in your holy word Romans 10 9 that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead we shall be saved right now I confess Jesus as the Lord of my soul with all my heart I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead this very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior, according to His Word. Right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace never leads to license, but rather, it always leads to repentance. Therefore, Lord Jesus, transform my life so that I may bring glory in honor to you alone and not to myself 
Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. If you have just prayed this simple prayer of salvation, I welcome you to the kingdom of God. I welcome you to his house. For therefore, you are saved and rejoice. God bless you. Hi, all. We didn't want to let you go without giving you our schedule, okay? Uh, and where we're located. Our schedule of our podcast is every Wednesday. I want you to come and listen to a new refreshing word from God. You can find us in the following um, social medias, such as Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash A Voice in the Desert 2017. You can also find us at Twitter at HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash Twitter.com forward slash A the Desert also username at the desert you can also find us at uh, at our blog okay which is my walk with my creator dot blogspot dot com uh, you can also get our RSS feed from uh, iTunes at a voice in the desert dot lipsing dot com forward slash RSS and lipsing is spelled L I B S Y N. And you can also find us at our main webpage where you will find all our archived uh, podcasts, which will be a voice in the desert dot lipsing dot com. L I B S Y N. Okay, so that's where you can find us and uh, hope we see you there. Remember, uh, give us a like, give us a comment, uh, share your experience with us and your experience with God. Okay, so take care, folks, and once again, thank you for listening. Bye.